Okay, great. So we'll get started. So today the topic I'm going to talk about is extending Moore's law through advanced packaging. As Professor Chaudhry said, we're not, it's kind of like bubble wrap. It's just really, really fancy, expensive, sophisticated bubble wrap. Again, as was already alluded to, all of our electronics are becoming way more complex. They're getting smaller. They're doing more things than we ever thought imaginable. Um, they are also all connecting to each other. So we often refer to this as the internet of things. So you have your smartphone, you have your smartwatch, you have a smart car, there are smart cities, there are smart homes, my Alexa controls my thermostat. So all of these things, the internet of things, require semiconductors to make them work. And in order to really enable all of these sort of new markets, we need smaller, faster, and more efficient devices. By efficient, I usually mean consuming less power. So in order to accomplish all of those things, we kind of look at three main areas. We talk about design integration. So before we even start manufacturing a chip, how do you design it to be as compact as possible, as energy efficient as possible, all of that. We have advanced lithography, which Joyce Lowe spoke about last week. If any of you were here, she talked about sort of the advanced lithography component. And then the advanced packaging, which is what I'm gonna talk about today. Okay, so why do we need packaging? Um, Joyce may have mentioned something called Moore's Law. Many of you may be familiar with it. But basically, it's sort of this principle we've been working off of for the past, oh, the better part of 60 years, which basically says, if we can shrink transistors smaller and smaller and smaller, and we can fit more of them on a chip, that we can get smaller, more efficient, and uh, faster devices. And that has served us well for the better part of 60 years. Um, but is Moore's Law coming to an end? So if we think about extreme ultraviolet lithography, which I think Joyce introduced you to last week, um, this is sort of the most advanced technology that we have for litho right now. And we're currently demonstrating single digit nanometer lines and spaces. So once we go past single digit nanometers, we're really into angstrom size devices. And at some point we're at atomic size transistors. <laughs> um, and then you are going to run out of space in the X, Y direction, right? There's only so much you can fit there. You, there's gonna be a point in which you can't shrink them any smaller. Um, so what do we do? How do we continue to enable smaller, faster, and more efficient devices that we need for our internet of things if we cannot shrink the transistors any smaller? And the answer is semiconductor packaging. So let's talk about what is packaging. So, um, as was sort of alluded to, we're not talking about the box that comes in the mail, the shipment, uh, but it is actually kind of close because in the grand scheme of things, in the simplest term, semiconductor packaging is about protecting and connecting the device. So being able to protect the delicate chip within the device and connect it to the circuit board. So if we kind of rewind all the way back to the 70s before many people in this room, including yours truly, were walking the earth, um, we have sort of this really basic uh, package type. So this is the simplest package type. It was invented in the 70s. We still use it today. In fact, something like this probably looks really familiar to you if you've ever uh, been lucky enough to have parents that let you open up your electronics as a kid. And so you've seen devices that look like that. What's happening inside of that device is you have a single chip, and that chip has a single function. So what I mean by that is oftentimes we have these different devices memory, logic, power, one chip, one function. And it's mounted onto basically a platform. And then what may be a little hard to see here, so we have this platform right in the middle of this package, and then you have these wire bonds right here. This is a physical wire, wiring, that goes out into what is called the lead frame, which are these spider arm looking things. And then that lead frame connects into your motherboard, right? Um, you've probably, again, all seen this. One thing I want you to note is that the package, which is basically that entire black and also the arms, is much, much larger than the chip itself. So we're using a lot of space for one single function. So let's fast forward to the 2010s and we start looking at, and really the 2020s, this is still what we're looking at. We start looking at much more complicated uh, structures. So we were, I was already asked the question, is this about stacking in the three dimensions? Yes, in the most advanced cases of uh, packaging. But what you see here is there's multiple chips. So if you kind of count them up, I think there's sort of six total. Um, you notice that they're stacked 
three dimensionally. So we're not talking about one chip within a package. They might have multiple different functions. In fact, this design has every function integrated within this one package. Um, you'll notice that the interconnects are no longer these big long wire bonds. What you see here is these sort of black lines that are going actually straight through the chip itself. Those are called through silicon vias. And so all of your interconnects are actually going directly to where they need to go. So those shorter connections are what's gonna help us make faster, smaller, and more efficient devices.